live. Arrêtez, il n'y en a pas. Ok. All together, verse 5, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 5. Ok, go. That is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. I entitled this message, How to be a good or ideal mother. How to be a good and ideal mother. Manalangin po muna tayo. Lord Heavenly Father, bless us as we ponder upon thy word. Give us, Lord, a spiritual hearing. As I speak to their hearts, Lord, I pray that you will... I, I speak to their ears. I pray that the Holy Spirit will, will speak to their hearts so that we, especially our mothers, they would be a good or ideal mother for their children. I pray that you will touch our hearts as we discuss this lesson this afternoon. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Sabi ko sa inyo kanina umaga, it's difficult to be a parent. Why? It's so expensive to be a parent. Amen? Difficult at the same time because it's very tiring. You need to do a lot of work. At the same time, mga kapatid, difficult because you're dealing with an imperfect person. Di ba? You're going to help them to grow. So, this afternoon, how to be a good or ideal mother. Hindi naman po pwede natin entitled to na perfect mother, how to be a perfect mother. Kasi nga, we are all dysfunctional. So, it's tough to be a parent. It's tough to be a mother. So, difficult, demanding job. Especially kung marami kang anak. Expensive kasi kung marami kang anak, syempre, habang lumalaki sila, lumalaki gastos. Di ba? Kaya nga dapat talagang bigyan natin ng pagpapahalaga yung ginagawa ng ating mga magulang. I forgot to tell you yung three sources ng authority na uh, kids, ano, parent control, young people, self-control, adult, God control. Okay? Importante po yun. So, ang tanong natin, to be a good mother or to be an ideal mother, where do we ask for help? Where do we go for help? Who will be our model? Hindi naman po pwedeng yung isang nanay na imperfect din, magiging model natin siya. So, the Bible gives, gave us a model that we need to follow. Psalm 103 verse 13 and 14. Psalm 103, verses 13 up to verse 14. Because there is no perfect mother or parents, but there is what we call a perfect heavenly father. Wala, sino kaya ang nanay? Wala namang nanay, di ba? Sa, hindi tayo naniniwala na mayroong nanay ang Diyos. Okay? Kasi kung mayroong nanay ang Diyos, Ang ama, sino ang, di ba? It's an ending dilemma ng question na yan. Hindi po pwede magkaroon ng nanay ang Diyos sapagkat pag nagkaroon ng nanay ang Diyos, may nanay din siya. Di ba? Laging ganoon ang question. Ano yung aanuhin natin? Kaya nga, ang Diyos is a self-existing one. He is the beginning and no end. Saan galing ang Diyos? Sabi nga na, Kaya nga self-existing siya. Okay? Ang sabi ng Panginoon. So, Psalm 103 verses 13 and 14. Pakibasa nga natin. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. So, God is our perfect parent and model. So, hindi dapat natin i-complicate, hindi natin dapat i-confuse 
yung parenting na maging perfect siya because it is impossible. So, although parenting, being a mother is difficult, demanding, but it you can be an ideal and good mother. Amen? Can you be a good mother? Can you be a good model ng inyong mga anak? Yes, you can be a great parent to your children. So, according to Psalm 103, verse 13 and 14, the simple secret on great parenting is this. The simple great secret on great parenting is this. Treat your kids the way God treats you. What is the simple secret of great parenting? What is, what is the simple secret of good and great parenting? Treat your kids the way God treats me, treats you. Yun ang bottom line ng pag-aaral natin ngayon to be a great and good mother. So the way God treats His children is the way you ought to treat your children. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, God knows that we came from the dust. God knows what makes us thick. T-I-C-K. God knows what makes us sad. God knows what makes us angry and happy. He knows our frame. He knows that we came from the dust. Ibig sabihin, naiintindihan ng Diyos kung sino ka, aware siya kung ano yung dapat mong i-make up sa buhay mo. Naiintindihan niya yung personalidad mo. He knows your strength. He knows your weaknesses. Because He's the one who made you. Di ba? So, naiintindihan ka niya. So, He is a perfect parent in a very perfect way. Because He is our perfect Heavenly Father. Kaya nga, sabi ng Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, ano sabi ron? Be ye perfect. Ano sabi ng Bible? Even as your Father, which is perfect in heaven. You see that? So it means, mga kapatid, ang Diyos natin, naiintindihan kung sino ka, ano ka, ano ang pagkukulang mo, naiintindihan niya ang lahat ng kalagayan mo. He knows everything about you. So tingnan nun natin ngayon, how to be a good and ideal mother. I'm speaking to, my, to every mothers today. Okay? Let me give you some principles or God's basic principles to be a good and ideal mother to your children or to your family. Number one, how to be a, an ideal mother. Number one, learn to understand your children. Sabi ko sa inyo, the simple secret of good and great parenting is what? Treat your kids, your children, the way God treats you. Paano ka ba tirnato ng Diyos? Ganun din ang pagtrato mo sa iyong mga anak. At alam natin, iniintindi niya at naiintindihan niya kung sino ka. At dapat, tayo mga nanay, naiintindihan mo ng lubusan o hindi man, o ilang porsyento na maintindihan mo ang iyong mga anak. So please, try to understand or learn to understand your children. Kaya nga, the number one complaint ng mga anak natin is you don't understand me. Okay? So dapat, mga man, mami, mga inay, mga nanay, ano ba ba? Mami, mama, kailangan nyo matutunan na mag-adjust para intindihin ng inyong mga anak. Mahirap naman tayo intindihin ng anak natin. Mahihirapan silang intindihin tayo. Amen? Mahihirapan po. Hindi pwede humaabot ng mga anak natin ang utak ninyo. It's hard. So try to understand your kids, your children. So that is the very basic principle ng parenting bilang nanay. Di ba? Proverbs 24 verse 3. Look at this. It's a great verse. Basahin nga natin, mga nanay, please. Kanina, mga anak nyo naman nagbasa. Kayo naman po. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 3. I hope your children, you will leave this place ng prayer ninyo at prayer natin sa family natin. Lord, help me to be an ideal and good mother for my kids. Help me 
to learn to understand them. Help them, Lord. Diba? Help me, Lord, na maging maayos na nanay para sa aking mga anak. Proverbs 24, verse 3. Come on, mothers, go. So, the Bible tells us, mother, the foundation of building your home is what? What is the foundation? Wisdom. It's not enough to love them. You have to have wisdom or understanding. That's sabi ng Bible, and by understanding, it is established. So you need to study your kids. You need to study their strength, their weaknesses, their hang-ups, how they wear makeup, how, how they love, how they make friends. You need to know what makes them the way they are. Why every kids or every child has a unique bent? Habang lumalaki po ang anak natin, pagmasan nyo maigi, kung saan siya patungo. Yung mga liko, yung mga... <laughs> Di ba? Alam nyo ho yun dapat. Pinag-aaralan nyo kasi galing yan sa inyo. Every kids have, has a unique temperament and personality. Kaya nga kung ikaw ay mas maraming anak, araw at gabi, pinag-aaralan mo yan. Sabi ng Bible, through wisdom, and house is builded. Hindi ho pera lang. Talagang dapat talaga, una ay pinapanalangin, humihingi ng karunungan sa Diyos, at talagang nag-aaral ka talaga para pumaintindihan mo ang iyong mga anak and then your home will be established. Matatag ho yun, matibay ho yun. Kasi naiintindihan mo ang iyong mga anak, ang loob ng tahanan mo, paano siya kumikilos, ano ang dapat niyong gawin. So you can motivate the same way your children. Understand your kids. By, ano? by learning, by understanding, by getting wisdom. So you cannot demand similarities to, to your children. Why? Comparing people, comparing young and old alike hurts. Diba? Kayo naman, you don't like to be comparing to others? So why do you don't why you compare your children to your children or your kid to your kids? Oh, but hindi ka kumaya sa ati mo, but hindi ka kumaya sa kuya mo. They are totally different. You, so you will deal with them differently because everyone has a unique bent, unique personality, different one attitudes. Lahat ho sila, they don't have the same strength. Yung iba magaling sa English, yung iba magaling sa math. Yung iba magaling. Hindi naman pare-parehas na magagaling ang mga anak nyo. The same strength, di ba? Ganun din ho weaknesses. They have different talents and abilities and interests. Yung isa, di ba? Sino ba mahilig sa mga anak nyo sa music na mana sa nanay? Pastor, walang nagmana. Ano, lahat. Wala yata, you know? So everyone is different. Imagine how many billion Filipinos, uh, 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 people are we in this world na magkakapare-parehas? We are all unique. So we need to understand that your children are different. Sabi, ma mga nanay, pakisabi nyo nga, uh, uh, mga anak, sabi nyo nga sa nanay nyo, we are all different. Si Paulo, kulutang buhok, wag lang ang utak. Di ba? Si Cedric, straight. Di ba? Yung kuya naman, Feeling guapo? Hindi, hindi. Guapo talaga. Di ba? So we need to understand that. So train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Actually, this is the most misquoted, misunderstood verse in the Bible. Bakit tinrain ko yung anak ko the way he should go? Pero nung tumanda siya, wala na sa church. Di ba, no? Wala na sa Panginoon. Actually, ho, mga kapatid, Proverbs 22.6 is not a promise. It's a principle. Di ba? Kaya nga proverb. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng i-claim na, oh, tinrain ko na, numaliit pa yan, paglaki niya na, hindi ho. Di ba? Principle ho yun na dapat mong gawin. Kahit na dalin mo ang anak mo Sunday after Sunday, tuturuan siya naman Sunday school, mag-memorize siya, lagi siya umati ng Sunday school, let me tell you this, ang anak ninyo may sariling vent and you have to know that may sariling vent, galing ang DNA sa inyo niyan. 
Walang pa ibang pagkukunin niya, maliban na lang hindi niyo anak yan. And the, the, the longer he gets older, di ba? Yung teenager na yan will rebel and will make a decision. Sometimes it will hurt you. Di ba? So later in their, in their lives, di ba? Minsan may, may rin siya mga decision na ginawa niya on their own. So, as a responsible parent, especially mother na nagturo ka, initindi mo, ginawa mo ang lahat sa best ng anak mo, and then finally, sabi ko nga ako sa inyo, pag sila yung naging yung people, self-control. You will not always be around your kids. Diba? Kaya nung maliit pa lang, inculcate mo na sa kanya yung mga principles ng Panginoon. So when, at the right time ng kanyang young age, so nagkaroon na ng peer pressure, Nag, nagkaroon na ng nasa kulihin na siya, sumasama na siya, dapat alam niya ang kontrolin ang sarili niya. Uh, I've heard yung mga young people natin na nasa kulihin, you know what I'm saying. When you are alone, your barkadas, your unsafe friends will tell you, inom ka naman, tikman mo naman, di ba? Have you, have, have they tried that? Yes, they do. Sometimes, minsan lang, sometimes they need to experience that. Para malaman mo kung may control na sila. Baka, baka minsan, nasa bahay mo lang, pero pag nasa labas na, magwala na. So, kailangan din, may testing ground para sa mga anak natin. So, try to understand your kids. So, para maging mabuting nanay tayo, maging mabuting mga magulang tayo, kinakailangan nating intindihin ang ating mga anak. So, importante po yon na maintindihan po natin. So, what is the proof of understanding? What is the proof or what is our proof of understanding? Proverbs 14 verse 29. So you need to help them to overcome problems. Diba? You need to help them to be discreet. You have to understand what they are good at. And what is way too difficult for them? You need to support them where they best fit even it is not fulfillment of your dreams. Actually, parents, mothers, do not make your children live on your dreams. Do not make your children live on your dreams. You, you, you have to prepare your kids to live for God and not you, but for God. Ginagawa ko ito, anak, para i-prepare ka mabuhay para sa Diyos. So what is the proof of understanding? Proverbs 14.29, mothers, come on, go. So what is the proof that you have full of understanding? Ano? Ano yung slow to wrath? Oo na nga, naintindihan ko naman yan. Ibig sabihin, a man or woman of understanding has yun, patience. The proof that you understand your children is that you are patient with them. That's the proof. So pag naiintindihan mo, anak mo, you are patient with them. You don't condemn their weaknesses. You help them in their difficulties. You help them in their strength. You support them to their God-given dreams and bent. Diba? Importante ho yun. So dapat alam mo kung saan nang gagaling yun. So that is God's basic principle to be a good mother and ideal mother. Number one? Number one. Understand. Learn to understand your children. Good. O, alam niya na ngayon. So tayo, tinitreat ng Diyos Patiently, because He knows your frame that we came from the dust. Eh, kasi nga, kung hindi ka iintindihin ng Diyos, wala, babalik lahat tayo sa alabok. Di ba? Pero salamat, mayroong umuunawa sa atin na Diyos. Ganon din naman tayo mga nanay. At by the way, kung ang nanay hindi ka rin iintindihin, wala lang kayong gagawin kundi mag-away at magtalo. Di ba? And that's not good. It's a matter of understanding to your children para humaging maayos ang relationship. So pagka ang 
Ang nanay, hindi maintindihan ng anak, mga kapatid. Wala kang gagawin kundi magtala. Hindi kayo magkakasundo. So, mother, please try to understand. Learn to understand your children. Yung stages nila nagbabago. Sasabi ko nga ako sa inyo, di ba? Pagka uh, kids yan, ibang approach. Pero pagka young people yan, iba na yun yung approach mo. Lalo na pag adult na. Di ba? Hindi po pwedeng yung approach mo sa kanya ay eh, ganun pa rin. Number two, not only learn to understand your children. Number two, you must accept your children. Who they are. You must accept. Not only understand them, but also accept your children. Psalm 145 verse 8. The Lord is what? Oh, mother, basa ulit ho tayo. Kayo muna. It's your privilege. So, if the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy, what do you mean by that? God accept you, who you are and what you are. Amen? So just, parang nanay, after accept, understanding your children, just accept your children. Ano ho ibig sabihin nun? Sabi ng Panginoon, ang Diyos ay mapagbiyaya, puspos ng kahabagan, banahid sa pagkagal, dakila sa kagandahang loob. It means, alam din Diyos that we are not perfect. Tama? Are you perfect? Mother? Hindi. But God accept you as a mother as you are. Ang tanong tawag doon, biyaya ng Diyos. Tama? So God wants you to accept your children just the way they are. Ang tawag din din man, huy, biyaya ng Diyos. So accept your children. May tendency, tendency ho kasi na hindi mo matanggap ang anak mo when they mess up. Mother, paki pasen your seatbelt. Paki pasen lang yung sasabihin ko. Hindi ho ako masusupresa and even God that one day one day your children will mess up. Hindi ako nasusupresa. Why? They are not perfect. Amen. Kahit na sila'y anak ng Panginoon, they are still, what? Vulnerable sa lahat ng mga mistakes ng buhay. So, anong gagawin mo? Ayoko nang umatay sa church. Ayoko nang magpatuloy. Ganin din na pala ang nangyayari sa buhay natin. That's wrong. Ay kung ang Diyos kaya, nung mag-mess up ka sa kanya at gumawa ka ng kalokohan, sabi ng Panginoon, o oh, give up na, biyaya ako sa'yo. Hindi na kita tatanggapin. Come on. Treat your kids the way God treats you. Amen? You are not perfect. But still, hanggang ngayon, tinatanggap tayo ng Panginoon. Di ba? Minsan makikita mo yung anak mo, they don't look the way we want them to look. Iba na damit. Ako, patay tayo rito. Ibinabuhok. Di ba? Hindi na meet yung standards mo. Anong gagawin mo? Magwawala ka. Di ba? So, kailangan talaga ng wisdom ng Panginoon para win ang ating mga anak. At kung ang anak mo is an honoring children, an obedient children, I do believe you can win them to the Lord. Just be a good example to your children. Psalm 127 verse 3. Mother, come on. Law? Hindi ho yan, law, law, no? Law, ano yung ibig sabihin ng law? Behold, sa English, narito. Oh, come on, mother. Okay. Ano sabi ng Bible sa inyo, mother? Your children are a gift from God. Nakita ko natin? So, when the gift is from God, that is good. That is pleasant. Diba? So, never give up your kids because that is God's 
precious and best gift for you. Wala ba akong amen dyan sa mga nanay? Amen? Children, young people, you are the best gift for your mother. Sarap ng pakiramdam, eh, no? Kasi alam mong, if you are the best gift, binigay ka ng Panginoon. Kaya nga, when you pray for your kids, you always tell them, God, you, give, you have been given to us as the best gift. You are the precious gift to me. More than the riches of this world. Hindi ko pwede ipagpalit yan. Di ba? Oh, God never created a trash. Amen? God never, mother, God never gave you a garbage. God gave you a precious gift. And that is your children. Diba? God will never waste an effort on giving unimportant gifts. It means, if God gave you unimportant gifts, therefore, accept them with respect. Honor them. Love them with delight that God deserves. And I will make sure you will be an ideal and good mother to your children. Are you delighted to your children every day? Nakikita mo, lumalaki na sila. Mga anak ko, dati, yakap na kayap ko. Ngayon, hindi ko na mayakap. Ang laki-laki na, di ba? Di ba? Sarap-sarap nakikita yung mga ano. They are growing up. Alam mo, ako, pag nakikita ko yung mga yung people natin sa church, growing up, sabi ko, what a wonderful experience to be your pastor. It's my joy and it's my success to see your kids. Kasi alam ko, pag nagtagumpay ang anak nyo, it's my success also. And when your kids fail, it's my failure also. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, during high tide, high tide tayo. Pag low tide, low tide ho tayo. Hindi po pwedeng high tide lang tayo magkakasama. During low tide, sama-sama pa rin ho tayo. At doon ko matetes kung hanggang sa low tide, sumasama pa rin ho kayo. Yung na-offend ka, yung nag-away kayo, yung nagkatisuron kayo, doon ko makikita how you love the Lord and how you are growing as a with a character Christian, di ba? Na mayroon kang character. So accept them, understand them. Di ba? Hindi nagkamali ang Diyos nang bigyan ka ng anak. Let me tell you this, mother, God gave you a perfect children though they are imperfect. Ang hirap intindihin. Di ba? God gave you the best children. He chose your children for you. Amen? You did not choose your kids for you. God chose your kids for you. God chose them. Kaya kung naniniwala kayo na ang Diyos gave you the best gift, then God makes no mistake when God gave you the children. Regardless of, the, of their strength, regardless of their weaknesses, I believe God never makes mistakes. Di ba? Ginamit niya yung genes niyo and He put them together. Pinagsama-sama ng Panginoon, hinahalo-halo ng Panginoon. Yung mga temperaments, personality na... At kapag nagsasalita, pag gumagawa ng kalokohan, kapag kumikilos, nakita-kita nyo ang sarili nyo sa kanila. God put them together and He mixed that genes to your children. So every time you look at your children, that is me. And that is the best God gave it to me. Di ba? Yung features niya, hindi lang yung mukha niya, yung hugis niya, di ba? Yung gandang lalaki niya, yung gan... Di ba? Lahat ng bagay makikita mo sa Kanya. So, kaya sabi ng Romans 15.7, tayo rin mga anak ng Panginoon, wherefore, receive ye one another, so Christ also receive us to the glory of God. So, God is sovereign. He custom designed the children He put into your family. God never mistakes when God gave them to you. So you need to accept them as a gift of God and lead them to be what God wants them to be. Do not try them to be like yourself. 
always affirm their uniqueness. Kaya huwag nyo lagi sasabihin sa anak ninyo, you need to be like me. You, di ba? Yung interest ko, yung gusto ko, kung saan ako magaling, eto, magaling ako magpiano, magaling ako kumanta, ganun ka rin. Eh papaano pag hindi ka magaling? Hindi wala nang galing ang anak mo, worse na yan. O atletik ako, dapat maging atletik ni Hindi ho. God created you differently. Di ba? Anak, pakisabi nyo nga sa nanay nyo, God created me unique and differently. Accept me who I am. Amen? Understand your kids. Number two, accept your children. Number three, bilis? Discipline your children. Discipline your children. Alam ng Diyos na tayo'y imperfect. Alam ng Diyos, we will someday make up a mess. But when the time comes, you should know how and when you are going to discipline your children. Pastor, bakit po kinakailangan disiplinahin ng mga anak? Proverbs 19 verse 18. Mother, please. Pati tatay, sama na natin magbasa. Ano? Nanay at tatay. O naitay. Tainay, pwede rin. Okay, go. Okay. You cannot teach all dogs new tricks. It's hard to discipline a person who has already gotten himself so many wrong influences across the years. It's hard to discipline someone who got used to use so many wrong habits and got used to living a wrong life for a long time. Mahirap na ho yun. Yung matanda na tao na magtuturuan mo mag-basketball, mm, matigas na ho mga buto niyan. Di ba? Kaya dapat ho, kung gusto mo mag-basketball, at your younger years ng buhay. Di ba? So, discipline is absorbed best and most beneficial during the tender ages and formative years. Discipline in the family is not an option. Parents, discipline in the family, in your family, is not an option. It is Necessity. Why? Why? Number one, let's go there. What discipline is all about? Diba sabi ng Bible, if you are truly saved and Christian, and you sin, ano sabi ng Panginoon? God is going to discipline His children. So, kaya kung tunay kang anak ng Panginoon and you're living in sin, living out of His will, time will come, God is going to discipline you. Let me ju just use discipline. Let me emphasize the word discipline. God never punished His children. But God disciplined His children. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8. Oh, kids, children, pakibasa lang. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8. Mga, na, mga anak, come on. But, if ye be without chastisement, So, God doesn't mess with the devil's kids. He does not di, uh, discipline what? He does not discipline what? Yung hindi niya anak. Hindi niya discipline. He punish yung kanyang hindi mga anak. So, discipline and spanking is a biblical term. It is a godly term. Tinuturo ng Panginoon ang ano? 
ang pagpalo, ang spanking. Kaya yung mga anak ko ninyo, takot silang mapalo. Yun hong alaga namin na ano, na panay noo. Ano? Alam niya, spanking hurts. Maliit pa yun, three years old yun. She knows that spanking hurts. She knows that dad is spank. Ano? So, importante ho yun. Maliit pa lang, alam niya na dapat yan. So, bilang anak ng Diyos, when we sin, and we never confess, and we live in sin, the Bible tells us, discipline, according to Hebrews 12.8, is a sure evidence that I am a believer. I am a child of God. Pag dinisiplina ako ng Panginoon. So, when God discipline us, If God discipline us as His children, so parents, you ought to discipline your children. So many times, tayo mga magulang, we cover up our children sa discipline sapagkat ayaw natin silang masaktan. So ngayong pong hapon, let's try to understand what discipline really is. We have to understand this very importantly because if not, you're going to punish your kids not to discipline your kids. Number one, discipline is not punishment. Take note with this. Note with this. The purpose of punishment is to inflict penalty. What is the purpose of punishment? Come on. To inflict penalty. I want to penalize you because you what you've done is wrong. Ano ibig sabihin nun? I'm going to punish you. I am going to inflict you. I'm going to spank you because of what you've done. Ano ibig sabihin nun? The focus is to inflict punishment. You're looking backward. Yung ginawa niya, nung nakaraan, yung ginawa niya kahapon. That's why the focus of punishment is on the past. That's why we don't punish our children. We discipline them. Or I'll show you yung difference mamiya niyan. Kaya yung mali niya na nakaraan, yun ang parurusahan mo. O, ano ang attitude na maraming parent pag nagkakamali ang anak, pinarurusahan natin. And that is wrong. Dapat dinidisiplina natin. Iba ho yung parusa at sa disiplina. Proverbs 29.22 Tingnan nyo ho, ang attitude ng isang parent na pinapanis ang anak niya. Saan? Sa galit. Proverbs 29 verse 22 So, hindi ka magdidisiplina, I mean, mga kapatid, punishment is when you get angry. Na ano yung ego mo? Diba? Sinagot ka ng pabalang. Ginawa mo ni pabalang. Sinapok-pok. Ang tawag doon, anger. Ang tawag doon, punishment. Diba? Proverbs 29.2 So the attitude of the parent in punishment is anger. Proverbs 29.2, Mother, come on, go. So you see, we, we punish out of anger. Galit ako sa'yo. But God never punishes His children. Maliwanig yung sabi ng Bible, He disciplined His children. Di ba? Bakit hindi punishment ang ginawagawa sa atin ng Panginoon? Kasi po, lahat ng kasalanan natin was paid on the cross. Your past, present, and the future. That's why there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Diba? Sabi ng Bible. So God punishes the wicked. God rejects the wicked. But He disciplines His own children. Number two, what is discipline is all about? Discipline is not punishment. Discipline is training in behavior. Training in 
behavior. What is the purpose of punishment? Come on! What is the purpose of punishment? Connected po ba ako sa inyo? What is the purpose of punishment? To inflict penalty. What is the focus of punishment? The past. Oh, let's move on to the discipline. Okay, the purpose of discipline is what? To promote growth. To promote growth. You're training your kids to have self-control. You're training your kids to, have, to conduct, to have a proper conduct and thoughts, and even proper performance. Oh, look at that. Proverbs 12, 11. Young people, pakibasa natin. Pro, uh, Proverbs. Hebrews 12, 11. Now, come on, young people. So, Hindi madali na dinidisiplina ka ng magulang mo. Are you with me? But in the future, I'll tell you, sabi ng Panginoon, it might not be joyous, but it, afterwards this, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto you, unto them which exercise thereby. Kaya yung mga anak na dumaan sa disiplina, yun yung mga anak na ang proseso maganda. Kaya kung kayong mga anak, hindi din disiplina ng mga anak nyo, walang aasahan na bunga ng maayos na pumumuhay. Di ba? Ang sabi ng Bible. So what is the focus of discipline? If the focus of punishment is looking what you've done in the past, what is the focus of discipline? Ha? Huh? Future. Sabi ng Hebrews chapter 12 verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present say it to be joyous. But what? Grievous. Kaya yung training, yung discipline, huwag kang aangal, mga anak. Are you with me? Ang hirap-hirap naman ito. Di ba? Just go with the process. Usually, tayo mga anak, hindi natin naiintindihan yan. Di ba? Neither me, neither you. Hindi natin naiintindihan yan. Just obey. So if you want to have a bright future, you need to undergo what? Discipline with your parents. Di ba? Siguro sinasabi ng Panginoon, kapag, kapag hindi tayo dinidisiplina ng Diyos sa maraming bagay, sa pera, sa lahat ng family, sa relationship, sabi ng Panginoon, I want you to be better in this world. So the end result of right discipline is assurance. Assurance. I know that, para, that, that the parameters and boundaries in my life will make me better me. Kaya yung mga, mag, mga nanay o parents na talagang tama at biblical at godly at trato niya, katulad ng trato niya sa Panginoon, alam mo yung anak mo maayos sa pumumuhay. You will be a better you. So, you see that? Let's move on. Okay? What discipline proves? Una, what discipline is all about? Number two, what discipline proves? Discipline is a proof of love. Discipline is a proof of love. Hebrews 12.6 Kayo ba mga young people, pag dinidisiplin ako, Ang nakikita niyo sa akin, monster? Natatakot ba kayo sa akin? Di ba nakikita niyo, tall, dark, and handsome? Pag nadidisiplin ako? Ang mananay niyo, pag nakikita niyo bang dinidisiplin niya, bruha? <laughs> Hindi naman, di ba? 
alam mo, mas mahal na mahal ka ng nanay mo pag kinukore niya. Kaya maganda pag nagkamali, nanay, patawarin niyo po ako, paluin niyo po ako, sapagkat nagkamali ako. Hindi yung hinuhuli mo pe, no? Mas maganda yung anak nagsasabi ng totoo, hindi nagsisinungaling. Hebrews 12.6 Young people, come on. So the Lord disciplines whom He loves. So when God discipline you, it means God loves you. But why is that when discipline hurts? What is love? Di ba? Kapag tunay na pag-ibig yan, kapag best na pag-ibig yan, kahit minsan nasasaktan ka, you will still love. Tama? Oh. Kaya nga, Pastor, kahit magkamali ako, it doesn't matter. Basta natuto kong umibig. Di ba? Hindi balin na masaktan basta naranasang umibig kaysa naman sa hindi ka nakaranas masaktan kasi hindi ka umibig. Ano gugustuhin mo? Hindi umibig at hindi nasaktan? O nasaktan ka pero umibig ka? Nasaktan. Ano? Ayoko nun, ayoko nun. Gusto kong umibig na hindi nasasaktan. Pero hindi pa pwede. Pag umibig ka, minsan nasasaktan ka, di ba? So, how could you love How could the other be the best he could be if there's no discipline? Do you want best for your kids? How could you give them the best if you will not discipline them? Diba? Is not love wanting dignity and decency for the other? Yes. So how could you be decent if there's no discipline? Do you want... To be successful, how could you be successful if there's no discipline? Diba? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 up to verse 6. Sana ganito ang pag-ibig natin sa bawat isa, no? Diba? O Christian lang ang meron nito. By the way, kung hindi ka anak ng Diyos, you will not experience this. And you cannot do this. Oh, bakit sa akin natin? Come on, all together. Charity, suffer it. Mali. Basahin nyo maigi. Charity. Mali nga eh. Basahin nyo maigi. Charity, suffer it. Long. Okay, tuloy. And it's kind. Verse 5. Verse 6. So love is real when it brings out the best in another. Right? Pag lumalabas yung best sa kanya. Diba? That is love. And it means providing him discipline in many ways. O, pag ano, paano yung sisimulan? Mahal nyo anak nyo, anong gagawin ninyo? Proper sleeping time. Proper way to serve. Proper way to dress. Proper way to behave. Diba? Proper way to handle problems. Tama? I, lahat ng yun, tinuturo mo sa kanila. So love is training someone to live a disciplined life for one's own benefit and greater good. So without discipline, there is no love. Amen? And if you love them, you need to discipline your kids. So if you don't Discipline your kids. You don't really love them. So what discipline proves? It prove it is a proof of love. Number two, it is a proof of correction. Meron ng nanay na nagbigay po ng iPhone sa kanyang anak bilang birthday gift with a contract. Oh, eto pa hindi natin gaya hen ano? mga nanay gusto mo ng iPhone? Maglagay ka ng kontrata. And this is the contract. Sabi niya, I love you madly and look and look forward for, to sharing several million text text messages with you in days in the days to come. It is my iPhone. I bought it. I pay for it. I am loaning it for you. Aren't I the greatest? Okay. Pangalawa. I will always know the password. 
Alam ba ng password ng nanay ninyo ang iPhone nyo, ang cellphone nyo? My goodness. Why? Why you need to hide your passport to your mother? Something is wrong? Are you hiding something? Is that a personal property? Yes. Do they have the right to look at your iPhone or your cell phone? Come on, kids. Huwag na kayo mag-cell phone kung ayaw nyo ipakita sa nanay nyo. Okay? Nakakahiya kayo. Cell phone lang. Pinagkakait nyo sa magulang ninyo. Di ba? Huwag nyo na silang bigyan ng cell phone kung ayaw nyo ng kontratang ganyan. Come on. Gusto nyo lang magmayabang sa cell phone. Gusto nyo lang maglihim. At yan pa magiging dahilan para magkasala kayo. Di ba? Mahirap lang yan. Baka mayroong mga kalokohan dyan at may relationship na kayo. Baka niligawan ka dahilan sa cellphone. Baka nagkaroon ka ng MU ng misunderstanding dahilan sa cellphone. Okay? Don't do that. Mother, get their password. Wala dyan cellphone, wala password. If it rings, answer it. It is a phone. Say hello. Use your manners. Misan, mga anak nyo, sagot, sino to? Okay? Pag nag-text ako, iba sinasagot ninyo kung ano-anong kalukuhan ninyo sasagot nyo sa akin. Ano? Do not ever ignore a phone call if the screen reads mom or dad. Not ever. Text ng text, tawag ng tawag ang nanay mo, ay mo sa kapatid. Why? Pag nag-appear ang nana mo ka ng nanay mo, nakangiti. Sagutin mo. Hand the phone to one of your parents or to your mother promptly at 7.30 p.m. every school night and every weekend night at 9 p.m. Tama. So surrender mo ang ano mo, cellphone mo at 7 p.m. School time, every weekend, so surrender mo cellphone mo. Okay? Ano sabi niya? It will be shut off for the night and turn on again at 7.30 a.m. If you would not make a call to someone's landline wherein their parents may answer first, then do not call or text. Listen to those instinct and respect other families like we would like to be respected. Minsan, ginagamit ang cellphone, panipag-away, disrespect, di ba? Minsan, sa Facebook pa natin nilalagay yung mga kaaway natin. Come on. Don't go to their level. Di ba? Number five, he does not go to school with you. Number six, if it falls into toilet, smashes on the ground, vanishes into the air, you are responsible for the replacement cost of repairs or repairs. So pag nawala, pag nasira, responsibilidad mo yan. Oh, listen. Number seven, ito kontrata niya. Do not use their technology to lie, to fool, or to, de to deceive another human being. Do not be involved in conversations that are hurtful to others. Be a good friend first or stay the hell out of crossfire. Oh, next, do not text, email, or say anything through this device you would not say in person. Malakas ng loob mo kasi sa cellphone o kaya sa Facebook. Do it in person. Kasi walang damdamin yan. Hindi kayo magkakaintindihan. Di ba? No porn. No porn. Turn off, silence it, and put it away in public. Do not send or receive pictures of your private parts or EE anyone else private parts. Di ba? Oh, pakita yung legs mo. Oh, pakita mo nasa beach ka, nakatupis ka, naka ano ka. Do not show that. Baka palitan na yung mukha mo eh. Gawin ang lahat ng kalukuhan, ikaw rin. Magsisi ka sa bandang huli. Di na? Yung mga private parts mo, kinikip yan, hindi yan pinapakita. Okay? Do not take a zillion pictures and videos. 
leave your experiences, they will store in your memory for eternity. Number 14, leave your phone home sometimes and feel safe and secure in that decision. Download music that is new or classic or different than millions of your peers that li than listen to the except. Diba? Baka yung mga cellphone yun, music nyo, panay rock and, mo, rock and roll. Si, si Gaga nakalagay dyan. Sino pa nakalagay? Si... Yung Korea na ano? Si Sai nakalagay dyan. Pinakingit. Huwag tuwa ka pa sa kanya. Oh, play a game with words or puzzles or brain teasers every now and then. Kaya yung mga yung people, ang gusto lang, kaya gusto mag-cellphone, maraming games. Pero subukan mo sa mga puzzles, sa mga brain teasers, walang maisagot. Mga, mga Webster, dictionary, walang alam. Kulang sa dictionary. Diba? Number 17, kasi alam lang game. Keep your eyes up. Diba? Number 18, you will mess up. When you make, you, when you mess up, sabi ng nanay, I will take away your phone. Aalisin ko lahat ng mga pribilehyo mo. We will sit down and talk about it. We will start over again. You and I, we are always learning. I am your team. We, uh, we are this team together. It is my hope that you can agree to these terms. Most of the lessons listed here do not just apply to the iPhone, but to life. You are growing up in a fast and ever-changing world. It's so exciting and enticing. Keep it simple every chance you get. Trust your powerful mind and giant heart above any machine. I love you and I hope you enjoy your awesome uh, new iPhone. Gusto niyo new iPhone? Gusto niyo na, young people? Sinong gusto ng iPhone? Oh, meron na kasi kayong iPhone. Oh, gusto niyo ng kontrata? Uh, kontrata. Di ba? Baka te-text nyo lang si pastor ng mali-mali. Eh. Wag na. <laughs> Ayoko nang ganun. Di ba? Hindi. Understandable yan. Hindi mo siguro kilala kung tinetext mo. So you correct when you love. Love is not love when most that it does eat but tolerate or ignore wrongdoings. Love is not love when most that is that is does is but condone or excuse misconduct. Love is, is love when trains one face up to his offenses. Di ba? Love what? Corrects. Love disciplines. Nakita natin what discipline is all about, what discipline proves, then let us see what discipline should be like. Paano malalaman natin, you are punishing at the same time you are disciplining. Pag nagdi-discipline ka ba, is the child afraid? Is the child terrified? Look at your child's reaction. 1 John 4.18 So, paano, na, paano malalaman disiplina yan o punishment yan? Tingnan mo ang mukha ng anak mo. Tingnan mo ang reaksyon ng anak mo. Ano sagot ng 1 John 4.18? There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because what? Fear hath torment. He that hath fear, he that fear it is not made perfect in love. There Fear and love cannot go together. Okay? Love must be love itself. So there is no fear in love. Do you fear God when He discipline, when God discipline you? Huh? We don't fear God. We love God when God discipline us. So important yon. So how do you discipline your kids? Parents, how do you discipline? Number one, Discipline calmly. Discipline calmly. Do not discipline with frustration. Do not discipline in anger. 
Proverbs 29 verse 11. Kaya di ba yung mga anak nyo, nadi-disappoint kayo kapag ka gumagawa ng kalokohan? Oh, Proverbs 29.11 A fool uttered what? All his mind. But, young people, tignan nyo, a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Diba? Ang hangal na tao give the full bent of his anger. It's foolishness to discipline your kids in anger. You are only hurting yourself in the long run. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, Ephesians 6.4, And ye, what? Fathers. By the way, ang discipline talaga ay binibigay sa tatay. Kaya ang nanay, pag dumidisiplina ang tatay, huwag ka sasangga. Maliban na lang wala ang tatay. Okay? So mag-implement niya, nanay. Wala yung tatay. Mahirap namang mamalo ang tatay pag nasa abroad. Anak, pinapalo kita. Aray! Naramdaman mo, anak. Di ba? Eh, mahirap naman yun. Di ba? Oh, that is the advantage ng bagay na yan. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. What? But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So use loving discipline. Do not Nag your kids. Okay? Naging does not work. Para kang Armalite. Hindi ka nakakontento sa Armalite. Minasinggan mo. Tapos may kanyon pa. Boom! Boom! Ang bihira. Talagang sabi na ako, bigin na ako, bigin na ako. Tigilan nyo na yun. Naging does not work. Di ba? Isa lang. Discipline calmly. Number two. Discipline quickly. Proverbs 19.18 Chase and thy son while there is hope and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Do not delay discipline. Do not wait. Do not wait. Huwag nyo sasabihin. Mother, parents, or father, wait for me. Wait for your father until your father gets home. No, no, no. Do it quickly. Dalawa lang ho ang ano namin sa family. Rebellion at tatlo, rebellion, fighting, and lying. Tatlo. Pag nag-away ang magkapatid, kahit magturoan sila, may paru silang dalawa. Pero mas mabigat yung palo ng bunso na lumalaban sa panganay. Gusto ko matutunan ng anak ko yung authority. Kahit anong mali ng authority, hindi siya dapat pabalang na nakikipag-away at sumasagot. Okay? Importante ho yun. Okay? Discipline calmly, quickly, and carefully. Do not spank all the time. Okay? Scolding, nagging doesn't work. Speaking all the time doesn't work also. Sometimes, tingnan mo, baka yung anak mo nagsisi na kahit hindi pa nadidiscovery, oh, anak, sapagkat ikaw ay nagsisi before I found you, then I forgive you. But, 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 yung privilege, mawawala. Ganun lang kasimple. Dapat alam ng terms ng mga anak ninyo yung bagay niyan para alam nila ang boundary line. Colossians 3.21 Fathers, Provoke not your children to anger, lest they be what? Discouraged. So let's go to number four. Express love to your children. Talk is cheap. Love is an action. Love has an specific expressions. First John three one. 1 Corinthians 3.1 Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of... Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knoweth Him not. Diba? Sabi ng Bible? So this is the way we ought to love our children too. So how we are going to express our love? Mother, number one, express your love through affection. 
Ano yung affection? Mother, ano yung affection? Touching. Touching. Sense of touching. According sa survey sa University of Miami School of Medicine, sabi nila, kapag in-include natin ang affection sa ating mga anak, look at this. Ang sabi niya, faster growth in premature babies. Faster growth in premature babies. Kailangan hinihipo siya. Reduce pain. Decrease autoimmune disease symptoms. Lowered glucose levels in children with diabetes. And improve immune systems in people with cancer. So, ang kamay does not God does not created these hands to beat up. These hands created by God for warmth and care. So physical contact, hugs and kisses, pat on the back, rubbing the back, in and out. In and out. So kung hindi kayo lumago sa ganyang family na merong affection, you can learn it sa pamagitan ng salita ng Panginoon. Ng Panginoon. Psalm 145 verse 9, The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. You see? In Psalm 145 verse 9, God is very affectionate with us. Di ba? So, mga nanay, mga tatay, encourage your children by affection. Di ba? Show your affection to them. Show them that you care. Come home with hugs and kisses. Ayokong ayoko sa lahat na darating ako. Huwag lang kayo mapapagod magturo. Pag, pag tumitot ako at bumukas ang gate, kinakailangan kahit nanonood ka ng TV sa taas, kahit anong bising ginagawa mo, kinakailangan ka mo ba sa lubungin mo ako. Ginagawa ba na anak niya? Huwag na huwag niyong pababayaan na ang anak niyo umalis at bumabalik at dumating ka parang, dumaan, parang may multo. Huwag niyong gagawin yan. Okay, turuan niyo ang inyong mga anak. Amen? You train them. Tinetrain ho yan, sabi ng Bible. Okay? So, nakita ho natin yan. Yan bagay na yan. So, encourage them to hug, to show their affection. Number two, express your love through affirmation. Have an effort to talk heart to heart. Diba? Get angry when you need to. But do not tear a person down with your insulting words. Be firm with your words when you need to. But give hope after and believe that He can get back up. Ganun din ang Panginoon. Psalm 145 verse 14, The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that, what? Be bowed down. So itinataas ng Panginoon ang bumababa, sabi ng Panginoon. So ganun din ho tayo. Do not talk down to them. Do not belittle your children. The way we talk, affirm, Build up instead of tear down. Because you are the same team. Pamilya kayo, anak mo yan eh. Winawasak mo, tinisira mo. Dapat itinatayo mo. Diba? Through affection, through affirmation, and last, through attention. Through attention. So, how do you spell attention? How do you spell attention? Come on, spell attention. Go! Parang kulang. Wala akong nakitang N. Attention. Attention spells T-I-M-E. Tama po ba yung spelling ko? Time. Give them quality and quantity time. Kaya ang ruling ko namin pag Monday ho yan, family day ho yan. Kaya lang ho, pag kami meeting... Pag-uwi ako, I have to go back and pay it in another day. 
make sure na kahit walang pera, kahit walang allowance, lalabas at lalabas kami kasi I need to give time to my children. Okay? Importante po yan. So, attention is time. Diba? Proverbs 4.1 Hear ye children. Listen, parents, mother, we ought to listen not only with our ears, but also listen with our eyes. Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Hindi lang ho yung tenga, pag nakikipag-communicate ka, tingnan mo sila sa mata. And you will see if they are telling the truth or not. Di ba? Listen with your ears and with your eyes. Pay attention to their needs. Baka mabigla ka na lang, walang nangy- meron palang kalokohan nangyari. Kaya sabi ng Deuteronomy 6-7, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Kaya yung anak mo, natutulog, umuupo sa sasakyan, nagtatravel, di ba? Naglalakad kayo, you always teach them. Turo, walang katapusang pagtuturo, sabi ng Bible. Di ba? Yung mga manners niya, yung paglakad niya, yung tama niyang pananamit, tinuturo yan ng parents. Yung pagbabago ng kanyang katawan, the other day, bumaba yung dalaga ko, Dad, ganito, ganito. Hindi niya naintindihan yon. Pero sinabi niya sa akin, I, I, I know, Anna, thank you for telling that to me. I love you. You go back to your mommy. Di ba? Yung babaeng normal ng babae, balik siya. And I happy to that. Yung body, bodily changes, yung kanyang sex, wala ibang dapat magturo niyan, kundi kayo mga nanay, lalo na babae ang anak ninyo. Kung lalaki, ang hirap turuan niyan. Pero you have to do that. Obedience to the authority, friendship, the meaning and purpose of life, God's love and salvation, prayer, the importance of the church, your morality, what is wrong and what is right. Tinuturo yan. Oh, how much time are you going to give to your kids? Lifetime. Hindi nyo kayang bayaran yan, mga anak. Lifetime. Laborer ang inyong mga nanay. In closing, let me give you number five. You must be consistent with your children. Sa kadapat maging consistent, ang sabi ng Psalm 145 verse 17, The Lord is righteous in all His ways and holy in all His works. In all His ways, in all His works. It means God keeps His promises. So if you are teaching and if you are living differently, then we have a problem. Why, mga kapatid? Paano mo ba dinedemonstrate yung honesty mo sa iyong mga anak? Dalawa, you don't imply perfection. Pagka mali kang magulang, say it, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Proverbs 18 verse 12, Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Pride goes before destruction, the Bible says. Number two, keep your promises. Keep your promises. What do you mean by that? I hope and I pray na yung mga pangako natin sa asawa natin, pangako natin sa anak natin, will keep it till the end. Di ba? We'll keep it till the end. Let's live holy. Let's keep our promises. Do not destroy your promise to your wife, to your family. Keep it till the Lord comes. Why? You destroy the image of God in the eyes of your children when you don't keep promises. Let me reiterate that to you. You destroy God's image in the eyes of your children if you don't keep your promises. So kung nagkamali tayo, say sorry and say to your kids, let's start all over. I am not perfect. Let me try again. Let me try again. Di ba? So ang keywords ng ating pag-aaral, how you are going to be a model and ideal mother to your children, 
treat them the way God treats you. And you will have, and you will be a model and a real mother. Amen? So mother, kindly get all your children and pray for your children today. Kayo naman na magpe-pray sa mga anak ninyo. Kanina sila nag-pray para sa inyo. Please, parents, pray for your children individually, specifically. Okay? Will you do that? Kung wala yung nanay ninyo, mga young people, if you want to have a better relationship, better, better future, have a relationship first with God before you can have a better relationship with people. Let's come to the Lord and let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for being a perfect model to all of us. We are dysfunctional family. We sin. We will make mistakes. We will mess up. But thank you so much, Lord. You are a forgiving and loving God and you discipline your children. Lord, I pray that you will give us, Lord, a model, ideal, great mother and parents to, to our kids, O oh God. We will never fail and we should never fail, Lord, for in this matter because this is God's basic principles how to be a great parent. Lord, I pray that we will desire this more than ever in our lives. So this afternoon, Lord, I pray that you will bless us in a very special as the parents or mother, Lord, pray, pray together in the altar. I pray that you will give them favor Give them strength, give them wisdom and understanding how to have a happy and better relationship as the years goes by. Lord, once again, thank you. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Shall we all stand up, please? Get your children.